Russian bots are back. Hashtag walk away. Attack on Democrats is a likely Kremlin operation. Are real life Democrats leaving the party in disgust? No, but Russian field online trolls want you to think so. So to put simply, if you don't know what hashtag walk away is, it's basically a movement of people that were formerly on the left saying hashtag walk away from the Democratic Party. They're leaving the left and they're not even necessarily going to the right, but they're at least leaving the left because it has gone too far left. And of course, if you're a writer for Salon, which is very left wing, not not liberal at all, but more progressive, and you see a movement saying, hey, we're leaving you guys. What else are you going to do but slander them and say, oh, they're not a real movement. There can't possibly be people leaving us. We are perfect. But I, I want to go through this quick because eh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny. Uh, a little more than a year ago, I posted and pinned the following tweet. Get ready. A year from right now, we'll be up to our asses in Russian fake news. Malware hacks mayhem aimed at the midterms. Pinning this. Granted, it wasn't a difficult forecast, knowing what we knew at the time. Now, I mean, as someone that's more center-right and someone that did vote for Trump, I, I wouldn't have been surprised at this all either. Because we figure with all the, the accusations of Russian hacking, which I still can't seem to figure out what actually happened, I see like 19 different stories and yet we still don't have any actual evidence of Russian hacking can't not saying it it can't happen I'm just saying we have zero evidence at the moment and even when it comes to the people saying that they didn't literally manipulate the vote they didn't literally like change votes they didn't literally hack it what they did was they hacked the DNC and released some information which nobody seems to be saying is false to WikiLeaks um, which made the Democrats look bad so honestly if it's true that the Russians released information that was true to WikiLeaks that make the Democrats look incredibly corrupt, then I am perfectly fine with that. I'm saying that I don't think foreign countries should meddle with elections. Everyone doesn't. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but I just find that odd. Like, if nobody's denying the fact that it's true, which no legitimate source seems to be denying the fact that this stuff is legitimate, then what's the issue? Like, that's fine. Like Snowden, for example. Snowden broke the law. Snowden went or Snowden released classified information that was true that showed the NSA was spying on everyone when they weren't supposed to, when they claimed not to, when James Clapper said not wittingly. <laughs> and yet the whole issue there isn't like, fine, Snowden broke the law. OK, good. Like, whatever. I'm, I don't care that he broke the law because re he released this very important information that was true. So when you're complaining about Russian hacking, releasing legitimate true information that reveals corruption i am fine with that like i'm i'm legitimately fine with that if it reveals something true and nobody has any yet has yet to actually prove that it's false and i don't think it was the russians from what i can tell there is no evidence that it was the russians from what um i've seen on a few sources like it shows that the information was supposedly transferred in such a short amount of time that there's no way it could have been wireless that it had to have been like a flash drive or some kind of um wired connection to move that much information in that short of time so it really does seem to be the the, the seth rich story does seem to be true just saying but um just to get that <laughs> out of the way uh, in addition to prior to intelligence community of assessments indicating that Russia attacked the presidential election with intention of helping Donald Trump win, the Republican-controlled Senate Intelligence Committee has released its own verification of the intelligence committee community's conclusions. The committee believes the conclusions of the intelligence committee assessment are sound and notes that the collection and analysis subsequent to the ICA's publication continues to reinforce its assessments. The committee will continue its probe from this position. It's also worth noting that the committee's chairman, Senator Richard Burr, Senator Richard Burr, RNC, said publicly that the committee has been incredibly enlightened at our ability to rebuild backwards the Steele dossier up to a certain date. Burr and company reportedly continued to communicate with Christopher Steele's legal representation to corroborate the remainder of the document. And so on. Um, so far in the 2018 cycle, we haven't seen any evidence of hacker attacks similar to what transpired in early 2016 and throughout that year, with malicious Russian hackers linked to the nation's military intelligence agency, the GRU, infiltrating Democratic Party accounts, then releasing the stolen emails through WikiLeaks. Anyone who spent time in the herring weeds of political Twitter recently, however, has surely witnessed the prevalence of trolls and bots swarming popular liberals and blue checks while simultaneously spreading propaganda designed to influence the outcome of the election. Election. Okay, so again, the Salon article is saying <laughs> the Salon article is saying that Russian hackers 
hacked the DNC, and released stolen emails through WikiLeaks. They're not saying any of this was faked. They're not saying Russian hackers made this stuff up and sent it to WikiLeaks. They are admitting that the DNC was hacked and all this stuff was true. So think, for example, let's say you have a scenario, you have a couple. Um, the girl suspects the guy is cheating, her boyfriend is cheating on her, so she goes through his phone when he's not looking, sees or finds some evidence, like while he's at work, she goes through his phone, finds some evidence of him talking to other girls, and it's like definitely some serious stuff, so she confronts him and says, hey, look what I found on your phone, like you're talking to other, you're having an affair with me, with several other girls, basically. And his response is like, oh my God, how would you, how dare you look through my phone? How dare you, you breach my trust? You, um, you, you, you steal or you, um, look through my phone without my permission. This is such a breach of privacy. I am just totally outraged. Well, n no one's going to look at that and say, dang, I feel bad for that guy. Like that, that woman was totally out of line. She just looked through his phone and that was totally unaccounted for. She's terrible. Uh, she's a really bad girlfriend. We'd be like, no, no, it was legitimate because she went through the phone and found that her fears were confirmed that this guy was cheating on her. So that that's what I see is happening here with the Russia stuff. It's like, oh, ignore the actual evidence that was revealed. No, let's just talk about the fact that like this evidence was revealed illegitimately. No, this evidence is correct. This is accurate. But yet no one's talking about that. It's like, as soon as someone catches you do something, instead of saying like, oh, um, yeah, this is entirely my fault, they're just like, oh, d d I can't believe you, I can't believe you um, breached our trust here. I can't believe you revealed this personal information. It's like, no, shut up. <laughs> We're talking about the bad things you did right now. We're not talking about the fact that someone got this information in a less than ethical manner. We're talking about the bad things that this information says you did. So that's what I, and obviously there's a bias, like there's an obvious bias to cover it up. <laughs> so no one's looking at like Salon and the DNC saying, oh, it's Russian hackers and thinking, you know, you're very unbiased. It probably was Russian hacking. No, they're like, <laughs> they're like, huh, how convenient that you're talking about this instead of the actual evidence that was revealed. But again, it seems not to be the Russians. It seems to be Seth Rich. Um, here we go. One of the present day present day agate prop campaigns linked to Putin's hacker squads is the walk away hashtag. The Huffington Post reported over the weekend that this troll attack is a countermeasure against the potential blue wave coming this fall with the walk away hashtag intended to simulate real world Democrats who have apparently chosen to leave the party due to its try not to laugh alleged intolerance and lack of civility. These people don't understand themselves. <laughs> So that's the, like, it's, it's quite clear that like, obviously, if you're a progressive and you're on the left and people are leaving your movement, that looks bad. You can either say, huh, there's a serious problem with people leaving our movement. Or you can say, no, it's all not real. It's all fake. It's, it's, it's all illegitimate. Like we're all perfect. These guys are, these, these guys are all terrible. No one would possibly want to leave us for this opposite side. And it's just, it's just wrong. <laughs> Like, again, the left, uh, again, when I say the left, because, like, I hate to be a partisan that's just, like, the left, the left, the left, the left, I'm not talking about liberals. I'm not talking about classical liberals or people that actually believe in liberalism. I am talking about progressives, people that identify as leftists, socialists, communists, these people. These are the intolerant people. Like, these, I'm talking about the far leftists there, not not the actual, actual liberals. Again, not just people that call themselves liberals, but I mean actual liberals i mean we're talking like you saw the, the day after the election all the riots in the streets and of course both sides do that to some extent but it still hasn't stopped like there are still people beating up other people on the street there's still people picking fights like that there's still you see um people from the like um the unite the right rally and then antifa clashing like that and it's just like it's it's there's so much intolerance on the left and it, of course that's just actual violence like hitting people with bike locks and all that and i'll get to the whole charlottesville thing they mentioned that later but yes so much intolerance and lack of civility because we see people like lacy green left to the far left saying like you know what it's just too, it's too stressful it's as soon as you have a different opinion you're kicked out i mean i follow tons of antifa pages and you see the whole like they're pretty much kicking out liberals from the left because the way they see it if you're not like a far radical leftist you're basically evil you sympathize with nazis and that and how can anyone be part of that movement <laughs> like i can't understand why a movement 
that just punishes you for having a different opinion, that says you have to agree on all the same things or you're a terrible person. No wonder people are leaving. And we can see that happening. The left didn't used to be like this. The left used to be not that bad. I mean, um, as a libertarian, a lot of the libertarians were part of the new left in the 1960s. They were part of like actual leftists in the 60s. They were working together. Uh, and then like, we see how things have gone since then. Basically, if you're a libertarian, then you're part of the alt-right. If, um, if you're a conservative, you're part of the alt-right. If you're center-left, if you're a liberal, you're part of the alt-right. How can anyone be part of that movement? If you go farther to the left and you say anyone that disagrees with me is a horrible person, people are going to leave. <laughs> no surprise there. But no, it's not a ludicrous, a ludicrous concept. This is legitimate. We all see the whole campaigns of trying to trying to banish people, of trying to um, kick people out, and like trying to fire people. And we saw like people were attacking the Black Swan bookstore. Um, I did a video on that. I'll link that in the description if I can remember. Um, if not, just look it up. Black Swan Books did nothing wrong is what I titled it. But yeah, they were going on about how this woman was just attacking, like not physically attacking, but um, harassing Steve Bannon in a bookstore. And the bookstore owner was like, I don't want you harassing my customers. Please leave. And now they're like, oh my God, he sided with a white supremacist. Um, Blake, we have to boycott this bookstore. And it's like, no, the bookstore owner did the legitimate thing of saying, I will not tolerate harassment in my store. <laughs> and now look what's happening. Like, stuff like that. We see all those kind of things. And of course, I'm not saying it doesn't happen on the right too. Sure, I hate when the far left does crazy things like this and then the far right does the exact same thing a week later. Like, I hate that. I hate that how the, the, the right wing will do something just as stupid and incredibly hypocritical a week later. But um, walk away doesn't mean move to the right. I mean, I suppose it does by definition, but it doesn't mean becoming part of the right, I should say. You can become a centrist. You can become a classical liberal. Like, apparently liberals are being banished from the left now, and they're saying, oh, you're right wing. So it's like, hey, you don't have to be a Republican or a conservative to do the, the walk away thing. You just have to not be a leftist, basically. And that's the whole point of this. Like, if the right may seem worse, but it, just because people are leaving your movement doesn't mean people are, like, joining the right wing. There's a rising centrist movement right now, and that is fantastic because you have, like, you have re Republicans, you know, but it, like not that many people, like not that many young people like the Republican Party much anymore. The Democratic Party is completely insane. Nobody likes the far right except the small part of small portion of people that are actually self-identified white nationalists. It's just like there's there's no room for most people except the center. So that's that's what's going to happen. Uh, but yeah, it's a ludicrous concept given the galactically more. That's an interesting word, galactically. Egregious incivility of Trump and his red hats extending back at least three years and including a deadly terrorist attack in Charlottesville, among myriad other examples. Again, deadly terrorist attack in Charlottesville. Apparently the guy was completely nuts. I'm not defending it at all. The guy's horrible. Killing people on the streets is bad. I think we can all agree with that. What I find interesting is it's not so much that, like, the right has killed... The right is more violent than the left so much as it is that the right are better prepared because you see like the unite the right rally would have been perfectly fine people on the left show up and again i'm not part of the unite the right for ra unite the right rally i'm not part of that at all like i never showed up i never when i saw the thing happen i'm like okay i'm not part of this at all but then yeah people on the far left show up ready to fight like if you follow some antifa pages you'll see their goal is to stop the fascists again and for them fascism is anything on the right wing basically or, or liberalism too um apparently but yeah, their goal is to stop these rallies. And they're not going to walk up and say, like, please stop these rallies. We would prefer it if you didn't. No, they're going to use violence. So the right's like, okay, we're just going to be prepared. And you saw those, like, there are tons of videos. Um, I'll see if I can remember to link a few, but just they're all over the internet of, like, there was one recently where I don't know where it was, but um, someone was recording, like, in the midst of a battle between, like, the far left and the far right on the streets. Um, some far left guy came at a uh, at a right wing guy. I don't know if he was far right or not. Um, came at a guy with a um, metal pipe or some kind of pipe. It looked metal, but some kind of metal pipe that could have severely hurt someone. Like we're talking that could kill someone if hit the right way. And the guy blocks it and punches him back and apparently caused, gave him a brain bleed. And now he has 25 percent chance to live. And it's like in that case, I have no sympathy for those people. It's like, OK, if this person dies. Is that's not right-wing violence, that's called right-wing retaliation. 
that's called right wing self defense. And in that case, I don't care which side it is. If you attack someone and the defender defends themselves, but happens to like brutally injure the attacker, I don't care. As soon as you become an attacker, I have no sympathy for you. Um, but yeah, <laughs> anyway, sorry. Lots of rants today or tonight. It's actually 1.41 in the morning right now. <laughs> in any case, this hashtag has been connected to Russian bots, according to the HuffPost report. It is ranked as the third or fourth most popular Kremlin-linked hashtag for days, according to bot tracking by the Hamilton 68 site, run by the Bipartisan Alliance for Securing Democracy, which keeps tags on Russian activity on the American internet. Arc Digital has made the same connection in these strikingly similar tweets, pushing a familiar narrative of democratic bullying. Arc traced the campaign from a Facebook group in May and subsequent tweets whose traffic suddenly began to explode late last month. Now, okay, I get this is hard to prove, so, like, I, I sympathize with the people that are like, yeah, we can't actually prove this. But there is a difference between something coming from Russia and something being, like, put forth by the Russian government. Because if you've ever, like, downloaded um, anything that turned out to be a virus, it was probably from Russia. Like, for some reason, like, all of the, all of the pirated games and all of the, like, um, pirated software and um, trojans and viruses out there for some reason they all seem to be coming from russia i don't know why and it's not that they're the russian government i mean they might be that's the thing they might be the russian government but they're coming from like hackers in russia normal people like russian citizens not tied with the russian government first i don't know why it's russia but for some reason there seems to be tons of like viruses and that coming from there kaspersky i used to have kaspersky um antivirus back in 2012 and then like a few years later <laughs> Apparently, Kaspersky fired all their, like, top executives and replaced them with people that used to work for the KGB. So, or, so it was like, huh, I'm not going to use that now. <laughs> I'm not going to use that antivirus. That's a little bit scary. But um, I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying, is this because trolls, people, like, people that aren't political but just are trolling and putting out bots and all that stuff? Is it, are they actually, like, part of the Russian government or are they just Russians? I don't know. And of course, the big point of this all is, is I'm not even denying that, like, sure, there might be Russia stuff here. There might be. But that does not, that does not mean that the whole thing is, like, backed by Russia, that this is an entirely, entirely Russian-made concept. Like, the walk away hashtag is a, an actual grassroots movement. Is it being maybe promoted by Russia? I have no idea. I think the thing is, um... It just seems that this is a way for people to get per for bots to get personal information, to get followers, to get money, whatever it is. I think that's mostly what it's out for. Not really like political um, hacking as much as it is just out to get personal information, out to steal your steal your money, um, out to get followers, just like that. But if it is, like again, I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying if it is, it, it's 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 not. It does not negate the movement as a whole. But yeah, that's that's my point. I'm not going to repeat it like six more times like I sometimes do where I restate it because I, I don't like how I worded it. But yeah, hopefully that made sense. Um, and then as I write this, Hamilton68 has ranked hashtag walk away as the most tweeted hashtag in the last 48 hours. Okay, forgive me if I'm totally blind here, but does not the does the following chart not like show completely refute what this guy just said? That walk away is the second most tweeted hashtag in the last 48 hours? I don't know. I don't know if they got the source late, and by then it was Syria, and they never noticed it. I don't know. To be clear, this isn't being circulated by earnest yet misguided voters who formally identified as Democrats. You don't know this. Like, you guys don't know this. It might be being circulated by bots. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it was being circulated by bots. <laughs> but that does not mean that, like, the movement isn't legitimate. Again, like, I guess I just restated what I said I was not going to restate. But the same thing, that doesn't mean that this group isn't legitimate. I know tons of people. I mean, I'm, I'm, I follow all the liberalist pages. I'm part of the liberalist society. Like, half of that group, most of that group, are, like, left-wing classical liberals who are like, hey, we're walking away from the left. We're leaving the far left. You see all these people, like, that used to be former leftists. Like, a lot of the big-name, like, right-wing people now used to be left-wing. You see, like, Jordan Peterson used to be a socialist. Stefan Molyneux used to be a socialist. I didn't really used to be a socialist, but back when I was relatively apolitical, I was like, yeah, why not? Like, as, as like, a, a middle school or high school, or generally, like, 
if I had taken a political compass test, I probably would have come up socialist or at least like moderate left. Again, I wasn't political, so that was just like what I was taught. And I'm like, okay. But once I started actually reading into stuff, I was like, okay, this is wrong. <laughs> but yeah, tons of people that used to be um, pretty far left. Sargon, who still identifies as center left, he used to be like pretty far left. I mean, uh, I, I'm in his like first or second or third video ever, it's one of the really early ones, he talks about wage slavery or wage theft, whatever it's called. And it's like, <laughs> you, you don't use that term unless you're significantly left. So all kinds of people are moving to the right. This is a legitimate movement. It's just that this is a hashtag version. Um, Walk away has obvious roots in the 2016 primaries when Russian trolls attempted to turn liberal or left-wing voters against casting general election ballots by the eventual Democratic nominee, either Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton, thus diminishing voter Democratic turnout. The same goal applies here. Oh, and yes, the conservative entertainment complex is on board. Well, of course, like... That, that much is obvious. Like, a lot of the walkaway people are probably already white right-wing. Because, again, if you're, if you're right-wing and you see people are leaving the left, where, no matter where they're going, like, you want to welcome them with open arms. You want to be like, like, look at this. Like, obviously, it benefits your side, whether these people stay centrist or not, or move to the right. But if they are moving to the center, you want to be like, hey, come on, guys. Like, move to the right. So I don't blame them for that at all. Obviously, there's bias there, but I don't blame them for that at all. Uh, oh, um, despite the reality that Russians are accosting voters with nefarious agitprop like this, including other keywords like rigged and witch hunt, HuffPost noted that Fox News is reporting this active measure as if it were an actual grassroots movement. It's not. Now, again, I, I wouldn't really trust Fox News as your sole source, but then again, I really wouldn't trust Huffington Post either for some, for centrist analysis, for a non-biased analysis. Uh, it does seem to be a grassroots movement, as far as I can tell. I know plenty of people that would be that are again that are moving from the far left to honestly just the left and they're they're seen in the eyes of people like salon as part of the right wing and they're not even like they don't even call themselves right wing they're just like yeah we're walking away from the far left so yeah the walk away attack appears to be tar I, yeah appears to be targeting disaffected registered democrats who might be inclined to fall in line with an exodus from the party a few months before a hugely important election sure that's a highly specific and pretty small demographic but as we've seen modern elections tend to fear feature too close for comfort margins swung by relatively small groups of voters the good news of course is the prominence of the hashtag doesn't necessarily mean that real life democrats are suddenly exiting the party well, we do know, I haven't looked at the statistics recently, but I mean, I used to be a member of the Libertarian Party, and they sent me stuff all the time, like, actual statistics, I mean, like, it wasn't just stuff they made up, I looked, like, they sourced it well, stuff saying, like, Independent is the largest growing, this has been going on for years, too, this was back in either 2015 or 2016 when I was getting these, I think it was 2016 when I was getting these, um, reports and it was going on just like yeah independence is the largest growing voter block people are leaving both the republican and democratic party so this trend isn't new like people are leaving the democratic party um whether they're still voting left or not i don't know but they're changing their party identification from democrat to independent which is reassuring um but even then like we we know that the democratic party is moving farther left like bernie sanders said he wasn't for opposing or he wasn't for um abolishing ice or ice i don't know like i call it ice um <laughs> the immigrations and customs enforcement and people were like like the left pretty much shunned him as like holy crap how could you not hold this position and so when bernie sanders is too far um too far right for the democratic party you got yourself a problem and when they're electing people i know she hasn't actually won yet but um when she won the primary in New York, um, Ocasio-Cortez, if I'm, I don't know if I'm butchering that name, but she's an, again, an actual self-identified socialist. She's further to the left than Bernie. She's a member of the Democratic Socialist for America. Um, that's, that's ridiculous. Like, you know, the party's moving further left. And so when you move further left, you're going to take some people with you, but no doubt people that aren't as far left, people that are liberal are like, okay, I'm walking away. Like this... The, like, the walk-away movement does not seem to conflict with what we know about what's going on with the world, the trends, and that if your party is moving further left, then yeah, people are going to leave. They're going to say, sorry, this is too much. And of course, they are true about that, that like, um, a lot of people generally, like, 
that there are there are, you have the people that will vote left no matter what. You have the people that will vote right no matter what. No matter what happens, they will vote left or right. And then you have people that really they're open. Like I didn't know who I was going to vote for till like October of 2016 or September. No, I think it was October. It's pretty close. <laughs> it wasn't until around the second debate whenever that was. I was between the first and second debate where I had really made my choice. And of course, I, I when I walked in on voting on um, election day, I wasn't like entirely 100% sure what I was going to put. Um, but yeah, we, we can see this happening now. Um, and and people, people in the center that aren't really sure, those are the people that make the election. Those are the people that determine the outcome of the election. It's the people in the center because those are the people that are open to being convinced. You have all the people, like those large blocks of people that have already decided, like just because of the D or the R next to the name or based on their party affiliation, but then you have those people that lean left that might vote Trump. You have the people that lean right that might vote Hillary. You have people in the center that might, and you have people that might not vote at all. You have people that might have voted for Evan McMullen and um, Gary Johnson and Daryl Castle. Those people in third party, Jill Stein, of course. Um, but those are, yes, those are the most important people, of course. Um, that said, money ballish tactics like this can be winning ones if the message sticks to the wall, and this one doesn't appear to be dissipating. The Washington Post traced this non-movement to a guy named Brandon Straka, a random human being from New York who's either being exploited as a useful idiot or who made a confounding decision to leave the party and so became the spark for this operation. So right off the, like, again, way to slander the guy. It's like, oh, it's a non-movement, and I know, like, based on the Russia thing, they, they already have claim to have justified that it's a non-movement but yeah there's not much to say here it's just heavy bias um the guy seems to be legitimate as far as i can tell uh either way this is neither the first nor the last example of russia's pro-trump pro-republican agate prop um this election season especially now that trump himself appears more steadfast than ever in his support for putin through his endless screeching about the so-called russia hoax Fortunately, Twitter is actively deleting millions of fake accounts, potentially diminishing the impact of Russia's current assault, which that's actually interesting because, you know, you've seen people like you can find people all over like um, social media sites saying like, hey, my account was deleted because they said I was a Russian bot. So the problem is what's happening now is they're like, oh, what do Russian bots do? Well, they tweet things like MAGA. They tweet things like hashtag 2A for Second Amendment. Um, and I mean, it's not that difficult to find which accounts are bots. Like I have 1,600 followers and a lot of them like are bots. And that's not because I paid for them or anything. It's just because I get random like follows from people that are obviously bots. When they have 19 different hashtags and an American flag in their profile picture and their, their, uh, their profile like, their their um what's it called their twitter handle like is just not something that any normal human being would pick it's like yeah that's probably a bot especially when all they do is do they just retweet things like their whole account is just retweeting it's like yeah that doesn't surprise me um they're bots but what's happening is um what they're doing is they're saying okay this is what a bot account looks like and then they take actual people who tweet similar to that who, who are pretty much right wing and tweet like just yeah go trump stuff like that they're like okay these people must also be bots so then they delete them and they're like hey like what's the big deal i am not a bot <laughs> like if you if you've ever been on twitter um if you haven't been on twitter don't start it's awful but if you've ever been on twitter you'll see people like someone will put some lefty will post something or some someone will post something someone that's like right wing will reply to that tweet and then they'll be like, oh my God, this person's a bot because they disagreed with me. <laughs> and it's like, no, that's just, there are people actually out there like that. <laughs> like, there are people, like just because someone disagrees with you and has a right wing view does not mean they're a bot, you moron. Uh, but yeah. Um, Twitter's scant attempt to thwart the attack is cold comfort, realizing the president himself is a Kremlin apologist. That would the president of the United States who swore an oath before a smaller than usual inaugural crowd if they just had to add that in because they have to make the enemy look small and yet somehow they lost to protect and defend the constitution so far he's done nothing but defend and protect himself allowing a most cherished institution our elections to be undermined by a hostile foreign intelligence service which i mean he's done pretty great so far i mean honestly like i have my i have plenty of disagreements with him like a lot of disagreements with what he does but you can't argue that like you can't deny that he's not doing what his voters elected him to do 
So, I mean, he did exactly what he campaigned on, so I don't know what people were complaining about so much in that respect. Like, he's like the only politician that's actually following, th again, whether you agree with him or not, he's like the only politician that's actually following through with what he's saying. And you have to at least respect that. Um, but yet, as far as I know, Trump has actually, like, killed more Russians through foreign policy than Obama did. I don't know if that's true, but from what I can tell, it is. Like, we know that with the Syria strikes and um, a much more aggressive foreign policy in Syria, like, there were Russian casualties there because of the U.S. Again, as far as I can tell, I'll have to fact check that. I'll leave something in the description. So look that up first or check the description. But I'm pretty sure that's true. So I don't get this because, like, I believe we have sanctions. We have sanctions on Russia. So it's like, like, honestly, at this point, the only way to, like, convince people, uh, the only way to convince people from Salon that Trump is not part of, is not being too nice to Putin is if he were to actually, like, nuke their country. If he were to, like, send a nuke to Moscow. Of course, if you were to, if you were to send a nuke to Moscow, there's probably the other argument. They're like, oh, look at all this large part of Russia that Trump didn't bomb. He's, he's still pro-Putin. It's just, it is impossible to prove it. It is impossible to convince them that, no, this actually didn't happen. As for my prediction from a year ago, indulge me as I repeat something I mentioned before. I wish I was wrong about all this. I really do, but I don't think I am. It's going to be an unnerving summer and fall, but the outcome doesn't have to be dire if we all keep our eyes open and recognize that our public discourse is under sustained attack from hostiles pretending to be African or Africans, Americans, <laughs> um, very likely backed by a few compromised Americans with links to the hostiles. Before you retweet, verify what you're reading. The stakes are too high to get suckered again. Yeah, I can agree with that part. Before you retweet, verify what you're reading. I agree with that. But um, if you ever need, like, <laughs> I like how um, Salon has, like, a section at the bottom where they basically, if you, went, if you read through the article and you agreed with everything they said, they have something at the bottom there that kind of, like, contradicts what they're saying, which is, do Democrats need a total overhaul? If you, af if you have to ask yourself that question... If Democrats need a total overhaul, then maybe it's possible that walk away could be a thing. Like just saying. If you're questioning if Democrats aren't doing things right, then yes, a walk away campaign might actually be real. But there are a few comments here, and I'm actually surprised. I keep forgetting that Salon sometimes keeps open their, their comment section. So it's like, at least I, I can respect them in that respect. But um, look at all this. Like, this message was deleted. This message was deleted. <laughs> There's plenty more. Um, I went through all these earlier. So many, this message was deleted, deleted, deleted. Um, there's a few more. Deleted, 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 deleted. And you can tell, like, from the comments there, like, I'm sure this guy will vote Republican come November. You can tell these are kind of, like, right-wing opinions that are expressed in the comment section. And of course, all like they're like it's it's obviously going to be like left wing, just because it's salon, so their audience is left wing. But I, I just find that so funny that huh they leave their comment section open, but all these deleted messages. That makes me wonder. Hey, they leave their comment section open, but it's like let's let's make sure to um, delete anything that disagrees with us here. Um, deleted, deleted, deleted. Probably because anyone that disagrees with them is a bot. <laughs> deleted, deleted, deleted. Uh, Russian bots are back. No, they are, never left. No, that's not what I want. But yeah, stuff like that. Just all these deleted messages. Which it looks like we're getting to the end. Hey, there's one. Yeah, that one was obviously um, right, a right-wing opinion because of the comments after it. But deleted, deleted, deleted. All kinds of great stuff. Deleted, deleted, deleted. But yeah. I think I made my point in the comment section. And that's, that's actually some advice. Um, the first thing I do when I read an article, like actually before I even read the article, is I go to the comment section and see what people are saying. Because that can really like change your view of an article. Like If someone writes an article and then you the first comment is someone saying, this is stupid and here's why, like here's an actual argument as to why this person's wrong, um, then that can change your opinion. That kind of undoes everything the article set out to do. So... But yeah, um, I'll leave a link to the article in the description. Um, take some advice and do what I do and enable ad, get an ad blocker if you don't have one already. Because again, it's not clicks that matter, it's um, ad revenue. So just block the ads and you can visit all the websites you disagree with without having just 
to worry about supporting them. Um, but yeah, like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more. I tried to fill up the space right below me here by putting an article audit logo, which I haven't put in a video in a long time. And also a subscribe for more thing because selfish promotion and you should subscribe to my channel, especially if you made it this far because this has gone on for 35 minutes. Holy crap. <laughs> I swear, I, I like the long... Un unmoderated ones because uh, or unlike edited ones because I'm trying to get better at just saying things on the fly like that without the pauses I'm trying to get better at really taking all of these like thoughts I have in my head and putting them out there without having to spend like 30 seconds to think of what I'm going to say then saying it then saying it like six more times because I don't feel I worded it right and then cutting it out those first five times that's the whole reason I started moving to this um, format if you're one of my like loyal subscribers that watches my videos, which to say there are two South Africans <laughs> that watch my video. I can tell from the analytics. There are two South Africans that watch quite a few of my videos and you two are awesome. <laughs> I don't know who you are, but you're fantastic. I just want to say that like you are the most loyal people um, that watch my videos as far as I can tell because half my videos, like I, I, mo I have mostly United States subscribers, but um, for some reason, on certain videos like the South African is always either the South African demographic is always either first or second so <laughs> that's awesome you people are fantastic um but yeah that's all I wanted to say but yeah the reason I'm doing this format was just so I could get better at just saying things on the fly and like actually coming up with good arguments rather than taking 20 minutes to come out come up with them and to say one sentence so it's just it's it's more for me than it is for um quality content I will say I don't know if that makes me a bad person uh means that i don't care about the quality of my videos i do it's just i'm trying to make the quality of my videos better by learning to um say things on the on like in a much um quicker like off the bat manner but again like the video if you enjoyed subscribe for more share this video around if you see people like if you see people sharing this article saying oh my god russian bots just post this in the comment section <laughs> I don't think they'll watch a 35 minute video, but you know, it might, it might upset some people that are so stuck in their bias. They, they think, um, they think I'm a bot. Maybe they can actually, sorry, that was my phone. Maybe they'll actually see from this video that I'm a real human being and not a Russian. I don't have a Russian accent. I don't look Russian. As far as I know, I don't have any Russian, um, ancestry, <laughs> but who knows? Uh, yeah, I'll end it here while I'm at, while I'm incredibly long, uh, I have an incredibly long video, but yeah, again, like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe for more, and thanks for watching.